secret in wilderness. I greet you in the name of Jesus. I want to teach you about secret, this revelation of what happens when we are in wilderness. That is what we want to learn today. Secret of wilderness, most powerful encounters of the bride of Christ at the wilderness. We start reading the book of Deuteronomy 8 2. The Bible says, Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness, those 40 years to humble and test you. Remember what the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness, those 40 years to humble you and test you in order to know what was in your heart whether or not you would keep his command. Hallelujah. We want to start here to see what the Lord is saying at this hour about wilderness. And you find that God was saying to the children of, of, of Israel when they were tested in the wilderness, God says that remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness those 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his command. So the purpose whereby God was reading the, uh, his children in, in, wild, in the wilderness is because he wanted to test them and he wanted them to humble before him in order that he might test their heart whether or not they will, they will keep his commandment. Now, in this life of a Christian, there is only one place that brings the character of a Christian foundation. There is only one there is only one thing or one place in the life of a Christian there is only one place that brings the character of the Christian foundation and that is in the wilderness. That is where we bring out the character. We bring out even the foundation. Uh, that is in the wilderness. Wilderness is the school of saints where one learns how to walk with God and how to trust God fully. The true servant comes from wilderness school. The true servants come from wilderness school, not from the Bible school or Bible theology. When God calls you in the wilderness, he calls you to teach, equip you, test you, and strengthen you. In order to be a servant of God, then you must be called in the wilderness. Accordingly to your callings, in wilderness there is no houses or friends to help you. The only friend in wilderness is Jesus, and mostly your, your, your dangerous enemies is always close to you. Who is Satan there? See, even Jesus also went in the wilderness and there was no help. The crossed friend was his enemy, the devil, who came to test him. There is no food in the wilderness. Their saints eat faith and they drink patience. They drink patience. patience. Then terrible diseases are found there. And, and get, uh, I, I repeat again. Then even terrible diseases are found there. And to get healed, you, you have to set your eyes upon Jesus, who is our salvation. Wilderness is where strength is found and where it is restored. The Lord provides it for you. In wilderness, God tests out your faith and there you must be more faithful to overcome your trials. God takes what you put faith in and takes you in the wilderness to test your faith. God also tests Job and took away all his things and all his possessions. That is what God did. Job, he was to, uh, God also tested Job and took away all his riches, healthy and family, because of testing his faithfulness. You must be more trustworthy where you are in wilderness. Where you are, where you are in wilderness, you must be more trustworthy. You must be more trustworthy where you are in wilderness. You trust only God. And you seek only God help. In wilderness, in wilderness is where God bless or curses you. Remember the Israel in the wilderness. God cast many of them and they died there when they disobeyed God. 
they refuse to trust upon God and to wait upon God. In wilderness is where God uplifts you and gives you the mantle of your position. After enduring and overcoming all the trials and studying in the truth, in the truth, in wilderness is where God uplifts you and gives you the mantle of your position. After enduring and overcoming all the trials and standing in the truth, before the mantle, there must be trials and challenges. But those who endure to to stand for truth at the end will be saved. After overcoming and trusting upon God in the wilderness. God gives you a sign of victory and that's when you see the glory of God. That is when you see the glory of God after overcoming and trusting upon God in the wilderness. Then that is when you see a sign of victory and that is when you see the glory of God. The healing process the healing process now can begin even to, to, to can begin to happen and now you can begin even to be strengthened and to be restored your strength like an ego. Many people want to serve the Lord, but they hate to hear about wilderness. When you enter in wilderness, there is no shortcut in wilderness, and there is no easy road to pass. You must go ahead and pass the long way, which is the only way to your victory. You must be careful and be ignorant to the voices in the wilderness. They bring deception which traps you and enslave you. You must listen only to the voice of God and God's voice and you will never be led astray. The problem why many people keep on falling and going astray is when they walk away from the path of God's will in their life. The problem why many, many people keep on falling and going astray is when they walk away from the path of God in the path of God wills in their life. I remember one day when, I, when God call, was calling me. I refused to follow his will and I was following my will. I did not succeed in my everything. I was always wandering without any safety. We must be object we must be obedient to the will of God and be ready to follow our master in the wilderness and we shall never get astray from our destiny. Obedience in the will of God will bring victory and overcoming your enemies. You must stand in the center of God's will. You must stand in the center will of God. Don't stand in your will, but stand in God's will. Ask yourself today, are you in God's will or are you in your will? Be in his will and he will protect you. When you stand in your position and in his will, then God will provide you in his will and you will never rack or faint in his will. Remember, Peter and John, when they obeyed the will of Jesus, and put their boat and cast the net. And they casted the net. They, they caught many fish. You also must also follow the will of God in your calling and you will bear fruits. Cast the net where the Lord God Almighty wants you to, to, to go. Then you will have to bear the fruits. Living in the will of God is seeking his kingdom and living in the presence of God each and every day following the word of God. There is a lot of blessing and provision when we learn to walk in the will of God and be one with him. I want to finish in the book of John 15, verse 4. Remain united to me and I remain united to you. I, a branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It can do so only if it remains in the vine. In the same way, you cannot bear fruits unless you remain in me. James 1, 2-4 faith, faith and wisdom Then, my friends, consider yourself fortu for fortunate or happy when all kind of trials come your way. For you know that when your faith succeeds in facing such trials, the result in, is, is the ability to endure. The, result, the results in the ability to endure. Make sure that your endurance carries you all the way without failing so that you may be perfect and complete, complete, lacking nothing. So, may God prepare you in this wilderness, because this is the hour that many are being purified in the wilderness. And that is the most secret, secret of wisdom, uh, of wilderness. Most powerful encounters of the bride of Christ are the wilderness.
May God bless you and give you strength as you continue to follow the way of the Lord in the wilderness. Shalom.